Hi, my name is Scott Simpson, and today we're going to be talking about micronodular lung disease. So what are the goals and objectives of today's lecture? So first we have to review what is the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule. This is going to be critical to under our understanding of the distributions of pulmonary micronodules. Then we have to review what are the three patterns of micronodular lung disease that we see in the lungs. And then try to figure out an algorithmic approach as how we can distinguish between each of these patterns. And then once we have the pattern down, what is the differential for that pattern? So let's first review the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule. So the secondary pulmonary lobule is the major structural architectural unit of the lung. These are best seen out in the lung periphery, and that's because the secondary pulmonary lobule is believed to be created by invaginations of the subpleural interstitium. This is the term the cortex of the lung because the cortex of the lung out in the periphery is where you best see these secondary pulmonary lobules. It's where they're best formed. So what is the secondary pulmonary lobule composed out of? So in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you have the pulmonary artery and you have the airway. And that's what we see here. Here is going to be the airway and then the artery. And these reside within the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. In the periphery of the pulmonary lobule, you'll have the veins, and you'll also have the lymphatics. Lastly, you have your intralobular septae. And your intralobular septae separate out the secondary pulmonary lobules from each other. So this is the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule. You have your artery and your airway in the center. That's this area in here. You have your veins and lymphatics out in the periphery. That's this area out here. And then the secondary pulmonary lobules are all separated from each other with interlobular septae. So the interlobular septae separate out each of the secondary pulmonary lobules. Okay, so what do we expect to see on CT? So normally on CT, we're not gonna see the secondary pulmonary lobule well. Normally these structures are not well seen by CT. The exception to that being the pulmonary artery in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. We may see that. Usually the outline of the secondary pulmonary lobule is not seen unless there's pathology present. So in this case, we actually have somebody that has smooth interlobular septal thickening. And we can see that that smooth interlobular septal thickening is actually outlining the secondary pulmonary lobule. And you can see that there's a clearly defined one here, as well as some additional ones out in the lung periphery over there. In the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you see this bright structure here. This is the artery. The airway you can't see, and that's because the airways are typically not seen this far out. They're too small to be resolved by CT. The only time you can see an airway this far out is when it's abnormal, that is abnormally thickened or abnormally enlarged, and that would be bronchiectasis or bronchioloectasis for the smaller airways. On the periphery of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you can see the pulmonary vein. That's this area out here. Okay, so this is what the secondary pulmonary lobule will look like on a CT, and again, we're not going to see it well unless it's accentuated by pathology. Okay, so let's talk about micronodular lung disease. So what, are, what is micronodular lung disease? What is a micronodule? So micronodules are typically defined being less than three to five millimeters in size. We're not talking about sizable nodules. They're not seven millimeters or 10 millimeters. We're talking about very tiny pulmonary nodules. And for us to say that there's micronodular lung disease present, it has to be numerous pulmonary nodules, not one or two or five or 10. This is when there's numerous pulmonary nodules throughout the lungs, so that when you open up the chest CT, what you see, your first impression, is that there's multiple nodules within the lung. They're numerous and they're just distributed throughout the lungs. And then the three major patterns, so the three main patterns that we're gonna talk about today are gonna be central lobular, perilymphatic, and random or miliary. So when someone asks you what's your differential from micronodular lung disease, you first have to identify the correct pattern, central lobular, perilymphatic, random, or miliary. So let's talk about central lobular nodules. So the central lobular pulmonary nodule is going to be related either to the artery or to the airway. So there's disease processes that affect the artery or the airway. The central lobular pulmonary nodule is going to be in the center of the pulmonary lobule, hence the name century. So it's going to be in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. These pulmonary nodules can either be of ground glass attenuation, so they could either be a ground glass nodule, they could be solid, or they could be related to a tree and bud opacity. 
So what do these look like on a diagram? So here again, we have the secondary pulmonary lobule. The central lobular pulmonary nodule will be somewhere in here. So in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. Notice that when we have central lobular pulmonary nodules, either of ground glass or solid attenuation, they're going to be evenly spaced from each other, and they're going to be evenly spaced because they're in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, and the secondary pulmonary lobules are generally even, evenly spaced from each other. In addition, there's going to be sparing of the pleural edges, so that's this area in here. And that's because, again, it's going to be in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. So, they could either have solid or ground glass central lobular pulmonary nodules. Another type of pulmonary nodule that you can have that's central lobular related is the presence of tree and bud opacity. And a tree and bud opacity will look something kind of like this. And what that actually represents is an impacted, very distal terminal airway with some sort of debris, either aspirated contents, pus or exudate, or some sort of cellular material, and it gives you this kind of branching, uh, branching opacity. These branching opacities on CT are called tree and bud because it looks like the branch of a tree with small little buds coming off of it that are going to bloom into leaves. Okay, and this is what the appearance of a tree and bud opacity looks like. So central lobular nodules, again, are going to be in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, evenly spaced from each other, sparing the pleural edges. They could either be solid or ground glass, or they could have a tree and bud configuration. And that tree and bud configuration is related to impacted terminal airways. So let's talk about perilymphatic micronodules now. So perilymphatic micronodules. So we already talked about where the lymphatics are predominantly located, and that's, they say, in the periphery of the secondary pulmonary lobule. So that's going to be this area out here. Now that's, that's partially true, but there's actually several lymphatic distributions within the lung. So there's one that's along the intralobular septa, that's the one I have highlighted for you, but there's also a bronchovascular lymphatic interstitium. So that's going to be along the bronchovascular bundles. There's going to be a subpleural and fissural interstitium, and that's this area out here. Then there's also going to be a central lobular interstitium. That's going to be this area in here. So you can really have perilymphatic pulmonary nodules anywhere along these distributions. So now how do you distinguish these from other cases? So usually perilymphatic nodules will predominate along a particular distribution. That is, you'll see them along the bronchovascular interstitium, or you'll see them kind of lining up along the intralobular septae, or you'll see them predominating along the fissures or pleural surfaces, or within the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule around the airways here. Usually one of these distributions will predominate. So when we take a look at perilymphatic nodules compared to central lobular nodules, they can also involve the central lobular interstitium, but they will involve the pleural and fissural surfaces. They tend to have this lined up appearance. You can see that they're kind of lined up one on top of the other. Therefore, they're not going to be evenly spaced. And then the third thing is that they're actually going to be clustered along a particular distribution. Like in this case over here, you can see that they're all clustered along the bronchovascular interstitium. So what is a random distribution of pulmonary nodules? So a random distribution of pulmonary nodules is where you do have some central lobular nodules, you do have some nodules along lymphatic distributions, but there's no clearly identifiable distribution. There's no clearly identifiable distribution. So what does that mean? That means that you have some that are in the central lobular, some that are along what could be lymphatic distributions, but then there's also some that are just kind of scattered throughout the secondary pulmonary lobule. And these tend to be evenly distributed. So even though it has the term random, these random nodules tend to be evenly distributed. That is, if you look at a particular section of the lung, they tend to be evenly distributed throughout it, but there's really no clear distribution. They're not clearly perilymphatic. They're not clearly central lobular. They're just kind of evenly distributed without a clear distribution. Now, like perilymphatic nodules, these will involve the fissural and pleural surfaces. So how will these look on CT? So let's do a little bit of a diagram here. We'll divide the lung into thirds. 
So let's start with our central lobular nodules. So our central lobular nodules, again, are going to be evenly spaced from each other. They could be solid or ground glass, or they can have this kind of branching appearance that's known as a tree and bud opacity. So these are what you call tree and bud opacities. So notice again with the central lobular nodules, they're going to be evenly spaced and spare the fissural and pleural surfaces. Let's talk about our perilymphatic nodules now. So our perilymphatic nodules will typically involve a lymphatic distribution. So again, they could be along the pleural edges here, like so. They could be along a fissure. They could be along a bronchovascular bundle. And they can involve the central, the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, but again, you're often going to see disease elsewhere. So lining up maybe along interlobular septi, something like this. So when we look at these nodules, they tend to be solid as opposed to being either solid or ground glass, so that's a clue. So they tend to be solid. The second clue is that they tend to be along a lymphatic interstitium, and because they're along a lymphatic interstitium, they are clustered. So they're clustered. So you can see that there's a clustering of nodules here along a bronchovascular bundle. There's a clustering of nodules along a intralobular septae. And this is very different than what we see for central lobular nodules. Central lobular nodules were very evenly spaced. And then lastly, we have miliary or randomly distributed pulmonary nodules. These, again, can involve the fissures and pleural surfaces. They can involve the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. But again, they're just going to be kind of scattered throughout the lung. They're involving fissures. They're involving pleural surfaces. They're involving the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, but just kind of diffusely throughout the lung parenchyma. So these, as opposed to the perilymphatic nodules, these nodules will, again, involve the fissural and pleural surfaces, but tend to be evenly spaced. They're kind of evenly spaced throughout the lungs, whereas perilymphatic nodules tend to be clustered. And what separates these nodules from central lobular nodules is the fact that these nodules will involve fissural and pleural surfaces, unlike central lobular nodules, which will typically spare them. Miliary nodules also will almost always be solid in appearance. So these are going to be solid. These are going to be solid. And these could either be ground glass, solid, or tree and bud. So the central lobular nodules have a couple different morphologies, whereas perilymphatic and miliary nodules or random nodules are almost always solid in appearance. So let's see if we can figure out an algorithm. So here's our drawing, um, just duplicated on a diagram here on the right. Again, we could see the central lobular disease up here, which is evenly spaced. We see the perilymphatic disease, which tends to be clustered and involving the pleural surfaces and fissural surfaces. And then we have the random distribution of pulmonary nodules down here, which again are going to be evenly spaced, but involving the fissural and pleural surfaces. So let's see if we could figure out an algorithmic approach as to deciding what kind of nodules are actually present. Well, so one of the easiest things you could do when, first, when you first encounter a case of widespread micronodules is look at the pleural and fissural edges. If you see that the pleura is involved, we're going to go one way. If the pleura is spared, right, so this is pleural sparing, so no pleural or fissural involvement, the only distribution of nodules that does that is central lobular. So this is going to be central lobular disease. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the fissures and pleura. If those are completely spared, that means you're looking at central lobular disease. Now, if you have one or two nodules, that's okay. We're talking about the overall appearance. If the overall appearance is sparing the fissures and sparing the pleural edges, that's a central lobular distribution of micronodules. Okay, so now that the pleura is involved, what's the next question we can ask ourselves? The next question we can ask is, are they clustered? So if the answer to that is yes, then we're dealing with perilymphatic micronodules. Perilymphatic micronodules will involve the fissural surfaces, they will involve the pleural surfaces, but again, they tend to be clustered. So note how they're all kind of lining up along a bronchovascular interstitium. They're clustered. 
If the answer to that is no, that means that they're generally going to be evenly distributed. If they're evenly distributed, we're looking at random nodules, so random pulmonary nodules. Again, these are going to be evenly distributed throughout the lung parenchyma. Okay, so let's do some practice. So here's a case where we open it up on CT in axial images at the level of the crina. And again, we look at this lung here, and we can see that there's going to be several micro 